and we're live on Corn's World. I'm here. I'm here with my guy Vlad, man. He was just clowning on me because I used to just have the red backdrop. I don't know. I don't know if you could see the red. Can you see the red, or is it just all stadium oh, lights? A little bit. Yeah, yeah. So I used to have the red. Um, I try to be semi-official and have like a little bit of official backdrop, but uh, it started looking like a little bit of a Broadway show. Like you know, I was performing in front of like an audience and that like all of a sudden the curtains would come open and then like a the main event would come out oh really so i saw i thought let me let me you know step my game up a little bit and i bought off amazon for i don't know it was like 15 bucks it's got some stadium lights so it looks like you know we're under the lights inside you know the stadium monday night football prime time okay yeah it does look like it. <laughs> you know, so i try to set the mood a little bit little do people know that it's a sunday afternoon at 12 o'clock and it's not as exciting as as what my backdrop looks like. Ah, oh, nice, nice. So, like so, it. so anyway, so, so Vlad, um, I appreciate you joining the um, the podcast. Um, we were so talking I'm a little bit last week. You know, uh, I was explaining to you what I do a little bit with my channel, and you know what I try to accomplish with it, and you know what the goal is. Um, and I've been following you and your journey a little bit. You know, we went to uh it was a junior college two-year college uh a little bit of a fake college i don't know how i don't even know how it's still operating suny coble skill for anybody that knows it um and then recently i've just been seeing you doing your comedy thing so i mentioned to you that i have this youtube channel that i like to just do chats with my friends um people that i've known from high school from elementary school middle school college um and just sort of hear their journey and story a little bit to where they're at now um, because I, I personally feel that everybody's got an exciting story. I know we were friends in college. Um, you were always hilarious. You were always very good at basketball. You were, uh, you know, just like a very personable person. And when you graduate college, you sort of get out of contact with people, but you still stay in touch with them via social media and stuff um, and see that everybody's living like a pretty cool life. So I had asked you to come on the podcast and sort of talk about a little bit of what you're doing now. Um, so the floor is yours if you sort of just want to introduce yourself and let people know, you know, what's up. The floor is yours. <laughs> <laughs> the floor is yours. I hope these lights are not too bright for you. Uh, yeah, you pretty much just put the nail in the coffin. Like, you know, we've known each other for a long time. When mm -hmm. we were in Cobble Skill, like, well, we were like 17, 18, you know. Explain that to was... people Cobble Skill a little bit. Because um, uh, for people that don't know, Cobble Skill, and I'll just give a little bit of high level background. Cobble Skill was like a college that was almost like people went there to get their feet wet for like maybe a, a bigger college that was more established, yeah. more organized, more uh, abiding by the rules. So how did you mm -hmm. how did you end up at Cobble Skill? Um, and and w well, yeah, what what was that experience like? Because I was always oh. curious as to how everybody ended up in Cobble Skill. Because I knew how I got there. I was a terrible student, but would get by by cheating off people. And, and that school yeah. was, like, open to all of that. Yeah. Yeah, well, Matt and Joe, uh, yep. I, I forgot who decided to go first. But basically, I, I was following them. They went there because we went to the same high school. And then they went. And then Joe was going to play basketball for them. Mm -hmm. I believe he's recruited for them. And I checked out the basketball program, and I was like, yo, uh, maybe I could just go and check out the basketball program, and who knows if I do well at basketball, I'll go to another school. Matt and Joe were going. Mm -hmm. you know, we were all close friends in high school. I, I felt like that was, like, the right fit for me. But Were you yeah. familiar with upstate? I mean, you were f people have a perception of upstate New York as, like, if you're from Long Island – uh, Westchester, I guess, is considered upstate. If you're from Westchester, anywhere past the Tappan Zee Bridge, like, you know, um, Monroe Woodbury or Warwick, where you're, where you're from, is considered yeah. upstate. Did you, for people that don't know, New York is very split up where, like, downstate New York City, Long Island is very, um, I don't know, like, I guess they're hip. They're more up to date with what's going on. But then you go upstate and it's sort of like a, a different universe up there. Did you understand what, was to come when when you went uh more upstate to school i guess hell no no definitely <laughs> not you know what i mean uh like we got we got snow but like where we was at cobble skill they got snow mm -hmm. and even if you go further up to like uh rochester they yeah. get crazy Waffle snow off. 
Oh uh, yeah, it was it was it was different, you know. It was crazy. I well, I didn't expect that, you know, at all. But know? even the people, like, so for me in Westchester, like the people are very uh, like uptight, driving Mercedes, whatever BMWs. But Cobleskill was like Cowtown, um, people with you know some missing teeth. They were all into farm animals <laughs> and shit like that. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I just yeah. found it very different. But I guess. I guess, I don't know, it was just strange to me going to Cobleskill and, and seeing a different part of New York that I never really knew, down, like, downstate. Yeah, Which, it was weird. It was cool in a sense because there were there were people that knew Cobleskill for, um, art, like, agriculture school, but then me, you, Little Bronx, um, Quiet, Matt, um, Joe, we found our niche of people that sort of had a common, you know, like thinking we were all funny we all related on different things um we were all up to date with music and basketball and stuff like that do you sort of need those type of people to like like get you through like could you make it in college without having people that are like-minded uh you know you need that you need that 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 certain amount of people now i don't know how would life be if y'all wasn't in cobalt skills exactly with me. Cause, you know, they didn't have nobody they didn't have nobody there those those times where we used to play ping pong and a, and a lot and that was everything yep. you know so we used to get play ping pong and just trash talk and you know people uh, trash talking who's better at basketball who's who's who you like at basketball whatever it is you know that's that's everything I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't even go to Cobra Skill to be honest if it wasn't for if Joe and Matt didn't go I don't even know if I would have went to be honest yeah that's why I heard it from I heard it from them like Joe I think. Um, Coach Mack was recruiting Joe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Matt went, and I guess Matt was going to play baseball. You know, we I wouldn't uh, those times in the dining hall, Champlin. It would be a whole lot different if it was just one of us there. It would be, <laughs> it would be different. You know what I mean? So. It's wild, and, and and something to compare it to what you're doing now, which we'll get into, like uh, stand up comedy. Is it's almost easy to make people laugh that are you know thinking the same thing as you how as a comedian now like can you try and get in the minds of people in your audience who might might not necessarily be thinking the same thing as you like you got to get in the mind like you got to make someone who doesn't even know what the hell you're thinking laugh about something you thought was funny like how how do you take what you've learned at cobble skill and in high school making people at like your cafeteria table laugh who all know you now making people that don't know you laugh yeah it's a holy is a different thing because like your friends know you so they kind of understand you yep oh you know? and um you going up there like for like five minutes new york city sets are like three five minutes if you're on a show it's probably like eight minutes maybe mm -hmm. that's a small amount of time to get a bunch of people to laugh especially if they don't know you so you got a small margin of uh error and stuff like that you know whether they you know, might look at you a certain way or whatever it is. But uh, but all I mean, I I'm two years in, and you know, you know, you take it, you take it in stride. You take you you go up there. It's it's a weird art form because it's like one of those things like where like you're presented on front of the audience like as is mm -hmm. like with any other thing like playing the violin or the, the guitar or the i don't know piano like you're in alone and you're practicing and shit you need it for stand up you got to be on front of people yeah. you got to feel what it feels like to be nervous or to to something to fall flat or things going wrong you got to and all of those things like kind of help you like uh like sort of like gain it you know mm -hmm. gain experience doing it so yeah, you you just take it in stride and you keep trying to. Like I'm I'm still trying to you know get better and stuff. Like, yeah, you know. Um, yeah. So, something I respect about you, and so for people that don't know Vlad, you know, we went to college. Um, and and I want to hear about the journey a little bit now. But where you're at now is, um, you're an aspiring comedian uh, in New York City, which I give you a lot of credit, man, because that's a tough it's a tough spot to be, man. Because as I always hear from other people, um, like there's no there's no sugarcoating shit in the city. There's no sugarcoating shit in, you know, Boston, as Joe Rogan says, or, you know, California, people are surfing, they're chilling, they're you know, with their girl all day, they're having smoothies and avocado, whatever, shakes, and they got money from their parents. So, like, they could go to a comedy store and have some sympathy and be like, 
oh, this dude's not that funny, but I'm going to laugh for him because, you know what, my life's not that bad, this and that. Like, I feel like New York City, I give you a lot of props because people are going out, they're spending their money, they want to fucking laugh. Like, so if you're not funny, like, they're not going to laugh. They'd be like, yo, come on, dude, this shit is trash. Like, so it takes yeah. a lot of courage to go up on stage um, and do that shit. And something I commend you for is you put on Instagram the other day, like, one of your sets that, that didn't go over too well. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah. to me, sometimes those are funny. Like, what was your mindset in, in posting that? Like, does that help you mentally, like, you know, see that and realize, like, all right, maybe I got to get better or whatever? Yeah, well, it, it, I think it shows perspective. Like, um, like, um, like that's that's how you get better. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like it's sort of like oh, when like Michael Jordan, like remember when Michael Jordan was like, uh, he said something to Shaq. He was like, before you win, you must first learn how to lose. Oh, remember yeah, that? that makes sense. That's a good quote. Yeah, yeah. Those those are the sets that make you better. Those those like sets where you don't know what's going to happen or, you know, everybody's just like, you know, you bomb so bad or, you know, it's just like it looks like the worst case scenario. You learn through that like mm -hmm. unconsciously. You learn to do that. And, New and in New York City, it's like, you know, people, you know, the paid money, like you said, and they go out and they have everybody so busy. So if they if they have time to sit through your set, they like they need you to get like, let's go. <laughs> like they don't have time for all of this. Hell like yeah. they could have you said they could have been doing something else. So they're very ruthless in that sense. Like they need you to be funny now. Like we don't have time to wait. Yeah. Like, I remember I was on stage one time and I, I pandered for like literally, I think it was like five, not even five, seven seconds. And somebody in the crowd, it was a white dude too. He was like, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Let's go, man. Come on. And I was like, oh, shit. Okay. They're not playing around and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. We need you to be successful now and shit because this, this is New York City, I guess, you know? Well, that's yeah. what, like, something I've always heard is like, comedy is that that thing where and I, i've done it myself too i've been to a comedy show where the the person has been complete trash or whatnot but like i was there supporting someone or whatnot and um i'm in the audience like granted again I, i'm not on stage i don't know what it's like i give you a lot of credit but i'm like i could talk i could say some funny shit like yeah. um so you you like you get upset but but they don't really know what all goes into that you know like it's a lot easier to sit in the audience and get people on your side than to be on stage and get people on your side, you know? Oh, most definitely. And in, in the audience, it's almost like you're part of, you know, you're part of this. You guys are a group, you know what I mean? And, you know, unconsciously, you think to yourself, you'd be like, unconsciously, you guys might just come to a decision like, yo, we don't like this guy. Yeah. <laughs> We're not yeah. going to laugh. <laughs> And it's like that ruthless thing. And, it, and it, you know, it's all, in fairness, it's all part of the process. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's all part of the pro. Like, everybody that, uh, every comedian goes through that. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's like, it's part of the stages. Like, you just learn, you learn how to crawl, learn how to walk and stuff like that. But it takes a long time, you know. That's sure. why one, one thing I keep hearing is just that uh, it takes a long time to just become, they say like 10 years to become, to become, to just find your voice, you know. Where do you get the, um, I, I feel like comedy is pretty cutthroat nowadays where there's a lot of comedians trying, you know, to to become popular or whatnot. There's a lot of funny people out there. Um, excuse me. Where do you get, like, the um, loyalty, like, where does the loyalty and trust come in with uh, someone who's the decision maker to put you on stage where they have to understand, like, it could take a while. You know, Vlad's got something, it might take them 10 years, like you said, or something like that. But, you know, I sort of need to make some bread right now for a business. So I, if I keep putting them up on stage and not you necessarily, um, yeah. like, is there a club where a person has to trust you? Do you have to keep finding different spots? How do you how do you navigate that? Uh, yeah, uh, people like once people start seeing more of you, they start trust you like any any anything like anything else. Like if a human sees you more doing something they started to be like oh he's serious about it so i think from the 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 shows that i've gotten has been from like people that book the shows they see me mm -hmm. consistently and they be like okay all right he's gonna come back you know because i think the worst thing is like 
um, when they first see you, like people think that you're just going to leave. You're not going to stay. Mm -hmm. So just in general, once people start seeing you, they, they trust you more and they, they give you an opportunity. And yeah. it, like the relationship is more, sometimes the relationship is more important than, uh, than the, 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 the actual performance. performance yeah. It's like, yeah. Cause like somebody like, it's like the dude that hustles in basketball. Like, you know, he's going to he's going to show up every time and put in that work. Yep. He might not be a, a fabulous uh, scorer or, you know, uh, like, a, you know, he might be a little small or whatever, but he's going to put in that work every day. He gonna, he's going to show up. Yep. A coach might put him in uh, faster than he'll put a guy who has like, you know, is more talented. You know what I mean? Yeah. So people that people like that work ethic when you put that work in. People see that and they'd be like, yo, you know, I'm going to just put him on just because he puts in that work. He don't even have to be funny because I know he's going to show up and I know he's going to uh, try and he's going to put in that work. People like that. So, yeah. No, I mean, that's a yeah. good point. And it's funny how like everybody says comedy is so different than everything else. But in the grand scheme of things, like I feel like what you just said relates to everything, like even in the business yeah. world, in, in the athletics mm -hmm. world. um, if you just keep showing up, you keep making yourself available, you keep showing that you care, that you're trying, um, yeah. people are going to be in your corner. They'll advocate for you. They'll they'll fight for you to put you up on stage. They'll find time for you. So, yeah, yeah I give you a lot of credit. Is there a certain spot that you like to perform at um, that, you know, you feel comfortable at? Or, or do you try and bounce around to different places? Lately, I've been trying to bounce around. Like, uh, you want to go to those spots where you're scared of, yeah. you know, there's there's a place there's this place in Harlem called Mocha's and then, <laughs> and it's like dude it's not it's no stage it's like a it's surrounded like it's a bar behind you and in the, everywhere else is just seats so like you're in the middle of the stage when people got to go to the bathroom they got to walk right past you yeah, that's crazy and they touch, they, they're so close they, they, they got to touch you and if you <laughs> if you're not funny they take their keys out and they jingle them Oh. And then they jump you off stage, and then if you don't go off, get off stage, they got the they got the uh, the countdown to ten, nine, eight. <laughs> it's like that's like it's the old got... school um, Apollo, where the dude would dance on the stage to get people off. Yeah. Harlem's the originator of just kicking people <laughs> off stages. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's exactly like that. But yeah, uh, I can't imagine. Like, and yeah, it, it's got to be tough, man, because like. I've known a lot of black people. I've known a lot of white people. I've known people from Harlem, from the Bronx. There's some funny ass fucking people out there. So like, you gotta come with some top notch shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got jingled off stage. And what, uh, what is that? What is uh, that like? I mean, like, um, it, it happened in slow motion because the first jingle, it's almost like, oh, am I getting jingled? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, damn, I am getting jingled. Okay. And then you process another thought like, ah, oh, it's not that bad. <laughs> and then, but it was just one person. So one guy jingled. And then I kept saying it because I was still like, I was still like, uh, how would you say? I was still like present and strong on stage, like my presence. Yeah. And I kept going and then I dove into it. It was about, it was about like, uh, it was a, it was a, it was a touchy subject. It was about rape. Uh-huh. It was about rape. So I brought it up again. I brought it like just that word is, is tough. So you got to maneuver. So I brought it up again. And then everybody just took out their keys. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. 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 And I think the funniest part is the reaction. Because like because women re react so like um, differently than men. They were like, oh, my God, like, are you OK? And stuff like that. And, and you know, but, Meanwhile, uh, like you're, you're talking about a subject that affects them the most but they're the ones that are like <laughs> yeah. backing you up on getting kicked yeah, off yeah, the stage yeah. for it, it yeah it's uh it's interesting but um yeah all all of that is man you know it's funny you don't you think it's the worst case scenario like thinking of it but when you do it it's sort of like okay you know it's not the it's not the worst thing that can happen and how know? is it how is it have you ever been back since? Is it almost like an eight mile where it's like you got to go back and maybe someone was there that yeah. night and they they jingled you and they're like, yo, this dude got jingled before, but like I'll give him another chance. How how was going back? How was like trying to conquer the jingle? 
Yeah, not only you got to go back after you get jingled, you got to stay because most most of uh, most people, what they would do is they like if they have like a bad set, they would just leave the venue. Mm-hmm. And I've heard from um, uh, where I heard this from uh, Tony Rock's cousin, you know? Chris yeah, yeah, Rock's Tony. Yeah, I actually saw him perform at the at the comedy store in uh, L.A. Yeah, Tony Funny Rock's. Guy. Yeah, Tony Rock's cousin Rashad Smalls. Uh, you ever heard of him? No, I don't know him. But he was like, he was like, when you when you bomb, you gotta stay. You gotta see those those people that you may feel uncomfortable or you feel uncomfortable. You gotta see them the whole way through. You gotta have be there, walk, have them walk by you, <laughs> say some shit. <laughs> yeah. So I stayed. I stayed that night when I got jingled, and then um, there was my friend. My friend had a good set. He killed. He uh-huh. did really well. So it's me and him. And we stayed to the end of the night. Everybody was walking by, and they was telling him that he was funny. You was funny, yeah. You you was funny, yeah, yeah. You was funny, and they would walk right by me, look me, and then just keep on going, oh. like that. There was one time, dude. Oh. There was one time the dude in the in the in the pack. He came up to me, and he was like, "Yo, I actually want to hear what the joke was." <laughs> Can you tell it to me? And I got excited. I was like, oh, wow, one person wants to hear it. So I told him, I was like, yeah. So it goes like, you know, um, if you, you can't you can't um, rape what you can't catch. Because something like that. That was the punks line. So mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. He was like, oh, okay. Hey, yo, follow me on Instagram, man. <laughs> <laughs> I see he was just trying to get a follow out of it. He was trying to get a follow. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah, yeah. So... I was like, yeah, you know, that's the grind right there, dog. Oh, you know, that is the, the grind. interesting part about it. Yeah, you know, it it, it 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 recycles over. So like, you know, you might have a bad set, and but then and you come next week, and it, it might be better. And yeah, it might be better and better. You get better. I yeah. like that. I like that advice. Um, because yeah, it is. It's not easy to sit there and sulk in that like that that pain of like I got defeated. You know, and I. I give your boy props because there's a lot of times where people don't have big enough egos to like even be like, yeah, I came in with Vlad, but like I got to sit here with him. I just killed because then oh, people yeah. are going to start to associate my shit with him or vice versa, you know, like so like I give your friend props as well. Um, but, yeah, it's almost like winning an NBA championship or a Super Bowl or, or being on the losing team of a Super Bowl. And they always show them on the bench, like sitting and all the confetti's coming on them and shit like that. And then they ask yeah. him after the game and it's like I had to sit in that you know, to, to really feel what it was like to be a champion or something like that. So yeah, no, I give you props for sitting in that. When, when did you first realize like you wanted to do comedy? Like, I'm sure you've been making people laugh for, for a while, you know, when was it like, you're really gonna get on stage and and do this? Um, you know, we, you know, we always in school, we always used to crack jokes, yep. you know, everybody was trying to be funny and everybody, everybody was funny. You, everybody was funny pretty much. Um, I thought about it back then, but that wasn't even like, I, 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 I was like, I can't even, you know, me, I can't even do that. And then when I moved out here, uh, I was like 23, I still couldn't do it. Like I would, um, I would call the club and be like, y'all have an open mic? And they, and I would pray that they say no, it's canceled. <laughs> and they'd be like, "Yeah, all you got to do is buy blah blah." And I hang up the phone. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. that. Yeah, so uh, there's been like little things, like little things happen. I remember I was uh, I was getting drunk with my boys, mm-hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, in this place, and they had like a comedy downstairs, and I was drunk, and I was heckling this comedian on stage. And that heckling started getting laughs, and then somebody, and then like it ended or whatever. And I walked up stage, and the guy was like, "Hey, whatever you was doing, you should do stand up." But I was still drunk, like I was just like, "Nah, forget it." And there was another time where I, there was at, at work, they had like a roast, you know those roasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And somebody was leaving, and then I, that was a part of the panel. And then uh, I wrote some stuff. And then uh, it really worked. Like it, it really, like it really, like it, it worked really well at this roast. And I was like, "Yo, that was sort of like stand up. Can I, can I actually go to an open mic?" So I told myself, I was like, "You know what? Let me just try going to this one open mic. And if I don't, if I don't like it, I could just walk away." Mm-hmm. You know. What I mean? So I went to this one open mic, bombed. First open mic. I know a lot of comedians they kill off their first time. Do they first really? Time. 
a lot of a lot of yeah i hear a lot of stories about they their first time they murdered yes yeah, like, but is that coming from them uh yeah because yeah. that could be like the old school like sorority and fraternity things like i used to hear about like pledging a fraternity would be the most yeah. brutal shit and like yeah. you can't tell what they really do inside the walls because it's so bad and you know that's the best fraternity and then you hear stories of shit and you're like it's not even that bad you know like just to like yeah, yeah. You even kill that hard, yeah, probably. But this, I know I bombed. This uh -huh. is, I yeah, I bombed. Like I was, I had a piece of paper, and I was reading off the piece of paper, and then people. I remember this girl. She was just like, she was just looking at me like this. He was like, the whole set, and I think it was. I only did like three and a half for four minutes. Uh -huh. I think I got like one laugh, and it wasn't even like a laugh. It was just like a ha. <laughs> that don't count. <laughs> That's it. Ha. Uh -huh. That's it. That's it. Ha. Huh. And then, uh, but you know, I did. I was like, you know what? I did it. Kind of want to go back, mm -hmm. you know. And I just kept going, kept going back, you know. And 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 were you always good with public speaking? Because like, it's it's not easy to get up on stage and do that, man. Like it's uh, it's a true art. Cause you, yeah. Is that something you were comfortable doing, or you just got out of your comfort zone? Like, cause I mean, I can imagine moving to New York City probably wasn't even easy for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's weird. Stand up, it, it covers that public speaking part. Like, mm -hmm. you have to be able to talk to people. Like, you are talking. You know, yeah, we're making people laugh, but we're communicating, and it's like a, it's like an exchange with the audience. I was definitely not comfortable. Hell no. Nah. I, <laughs> I, was, I was very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. And, and you know, I still get, I still get uh, some, uncom I still get uncomfortable sometimes. You know, it's not as uncomfortable as what it was like maybe last year, maybe six months ago, but yeah, you know, you still feel those things because it's, it's everything. Like, you know, it's, you're sort of like you, this thing up there and then you're expected to do like everything. You yeah. expected, you know, people, people like some people, like people like the crowd work. Mm -hmm. You do the crowd work. People like the written jokes, the jokes. People like the riffs and the, oh, can you make a joke in the moment on oh, stage? Yeah, your joke is funny, but... Can you do crowd work though? Uh, I've never seen him do crowd work. Ah, uh, he do crowd work, but his jokes ain't really like that. You know what I mean? People are like, you know what I mean? So yeah. You gotta, you gotta try to tap into uh, to all of those things and try to, you know, you know, try try those things and those things you learn as you do it. So how how do you navigate that world? Do you go up on stage some nights like, um. And you're like, all right, I'm going to do crowd work tonight or tonight I'm going to do my set or tonight I'm going to focus on there's a girl in the front row that looks like she's not laughing. I'm going to try and break her or something like that. What's is your mindset different every time you go on stage? Yeah, it's different because every every crowd is different. There was one time I did this open mic and it's usually uh, mostly comics at this open mic. Well, for some reason, it was this this <laughs> for some reason, this stage, this audience was packed mm -hmm. with um Mexican instruction workers. Mexican construction workers? Hispanic, Hispanic yeah, instruction yeah. workers. They just had the they had the shit on, everything, the boots, they had that the helmets on the table. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, I don't know, it's random. So you can't they, go in there with some material. English, they yeah. said it's, you know, like a like a couple, a few of them spoke English, like you know what I mean? And you know, I was I walked in there and it's packed. There's all of them. It's like twenty some of them. Every comic that's going up there is talking in English. They're just like eating pizza, drinking. They wasn't even paying attention. A comic, Spanish comic, goes up there. He's like, "Ole!" and everybody like they go crazy. He starts speaking Spanish and they go crazy. Probably loving them. And at that point, I was like, "I my shit is not like if I go through my written stuff, they're not gonna understand." <laughs> So I, I decided just just do crowd work, you know. Um, but they probably almost yeah. you could probably pass for Hispanic a little bit. Like they probably got a little excited before you came on the stage. <laughs> I would have played off of some like shit, like yeah, I'm Hispanic. Yeah. I don't speak Spanish though. So they would have maybe gave you a little bit of sympathy or something. Yeah, nah, not yeah, yeah. I guess so, but yeah, not even like they was. I guess I don't know. Like do you, you almost want to try? Yeah. Do you almost ever get curious to try your stuff outside of New York to see if maybe it, it could be funnier somewhere else? Like going to just a random spot, um, maybe. In, I mean, 
in an upstate New York or just going to like Jersey's probably tough too, but going somewhere random like uh, Utah and getting up on stage and maybe seeing if your shit works. You ever thought about seeing if like your stuff works outside of like, like you're starting behind the eight ball being in like one of the biggest, hardest cities to make it. You ever thought about doing your stuff elsewhere and seeing if it works? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. Um, you, that's what they say. They say to go, to go everywhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh yeah i guess i don't know i guess i need to mm -hmm. you know i want i want to start doing different stuff like that like uh this year that's kind of what i want to do so like um this is different this podcast is very different yeah. like i you know i you know i've never really been a part of it. i had a i had a little uh a little a little bullshit pro podcast in the beginning <laughs> but i kind of cut that off but <laughs> but the, you know like doing different stuff i think is uh is important to like to like you know get out of your i mean you get out of your comfort zone on stage but outside of that comedians like and that's something i wanted to bring up with you because I, I thought of this before we got on the podcast which i found pretty interesting was like i always for all the funny ass comedians that i know they're never really too active on like social media or twitter or stuff like that you know because like their stuff like you're funny in person you're funny when i'm with you you're funny on stage but like having to put that into text and like put it onto social media sort of like waters down the comedy, you know, where like a real true comedian who's very funny looks at that shit. Like I'm not going to put a joke on my Instagram account or something or a tweet because it's like, that's, that's just corny. It's not this, you know, what is this like fucking knock, knock jokes? Like real <laughs> comedy is, you know, being next to me and me making a joke about some guy picking his nose or some shit like that. So like, yeah. I've always found, and I think what what you've done in the past, you've put some stuff on your Instagram with like it was you and your roommate or ex roommate or something of just little short clips of like you guys doing funny shit, which was hilarious, you know. So like, there's different types of you know comedy on social media, and like you putting the video of you bombing. Um, hopefully, there's videos of you being successful coming up and stuff like that. But like seeing raw authentic stuff like that rather than you know tweets because like there's political people on um not polit there's comedians on on twitter who could put funny tweets out but if you hang out with them it's like this dude this is the dude who's putting out all this funny shit that, you know like have you have you realized that where you've you, you've either met somebody who's funny through social media but then you've hung out with them and you're like this dude's a cornball like i'm way funnier than him yeah um uh, i don't know I, I i don't know i i think i guess there there's a different type of craps and mm -hmm. like people could might be funnier on on tweets and people might do certain things like really really well um yeah i mean i don't i don't know i try not to get into like who's Who's funnier? Mm -hmm. last, but obviously you have your favorites that you really like, and then you, you to. But I think everybody has their own funny. Mm -hmm. You know, even even people that are um, not comedians. Like there's a there's a dude at my job. He's hilarious. He mm -hmm. doesn't do comedy. He's just uh, he's naturally naturally funny. Um, yeah, I, it's it's tough. Like um, like what you said, the 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 social media thing kind of does water it down um but you you still should uh try stuff too because yep. like uh like Chappelle, he did those skits if he if, if Chappelle didn't have that Chappelle show you know who knows like where where his career kind of would have been because mm -hmm. so he took a risk trying skits out i get i i definitely agree like with the uh like when you there's a reach like you know where you're trying so hard to like get famous and get some clout or like uh trying to post and trying to be that dude it kind of like kind of like takes away from it mm -hmm. it has to be it has to be like an organic type of funny that you know that uh people could relate to you know what i mean yeah but, uh, but yeah um you should try those things uh, try to you know try to do so certain stuff and stuff like that yeah you know? I mean, yeah i think there's definitely a balance and i think i think you're doing a good job i mean i appreciate you doing this here because i mean like i said uh you never know who's who's watching something like i'm sure when you go out on stage you're never thinking who's in the audience have you ever heard 
while you're performing um like oh such and such is in the building tonight or something like that or and and just been a little nervous because you know i don't know a comedian that you look up to is in the building or watching or have you ever like performed in front of someone who who like who's i don't know someone you look up to yeah um yeah you have that a lot you uh i haven't performed in front of like a big celebrity like chris rock or Dave Chappelle or any any of those guys because most of those guys they go to this comedy cellar yeah yeah, yeah. i I, I've been in the cellar a few times, but have you performed, uh, or you just went to to watch? Just to watch. Okay. Yeah, just went. To watch. Yeah. Um, and do you notice it? Is it is? Can you notice like a big difference, or you're like, I'm I'm with these people. I'm in the same arena. Um, or is it night and day? Like like it's night and day. Really? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's night and day. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big difference. Like uh, especially like when you compare like open micers, because I'm an open micer. Mm-hmm. I'm, I would do open mics. Uh, you compare like a dude that does open mics to like a, a person that performs at the cellar, that that a person that had specials, that's went on tour, you know, that's been through hella experiences. Like, you know, if a person drops a drink, he probably has 10 jokes lined up where he could fucking do like, he yeah. could do like that. There's a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's okay. I think it's okay to like, for comedians to embrace that. Like, it's okay. Cause like, uh you comparing yourself to yourself it's like it's like any other thing like um like basketball i guess you comparing you want to get you want to improve for yourself mm-hmm. and, you know if you try to if you try to compare it to them it, it's not it's, i mean i guess but you know you kind of want to be the best person you could be yeah you know? so but yeah there's there like little people in the audience i dude i <laughs> I mean, so weird where, you know, you could see a girl that you might think is cute and then you might get nervous just because you might for you're afraid that she's going to see you on stage, whether you bomb or or you, you kill or whatever. You might see a person, uh, you know, you might see somebody, a, a boy that, you know, that uh, kind of has been been doing it longer than you and you've been seeing it at the mics and now he sees you again you haven't seen him in a long time you're afraid how he's gonna see you now if you've been putting in the work it's like little things like that 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 goes through your mind and i think you should uh you should reflect and uh well i try i try my best to like reflect and see like how do i feel about this moment uh like oh the bartender's cute how how's she gonna look at my comedy is she not gonna like me after my set you know, she, am I like? And do you focus you know, on that when you're on stage? Like, do you see if she's laughing or something, maybe, or like, you just maybe put that in your head and then forget about it as you're performing? Now it doesn't affect me as much mm-hmm. as it used to, but definitely, like, like last year or maybe in the beginning, you would it would go through your head, mm-hmm. like, ooh, she's she's looking, or ooh, she's not paying attention. Oh, this per- this person's on their phone, and then you take it, you you kind of take it to heart. But now. It, now it's it's so special, like you said, like this this there's a certain special energy that I feel like it, it comes through you, and it is not even just stand up comedy. This could be related to anything. It's like the special like thing inside of you where it's sort of like it kind of doesn't matter like who is there because it's not it's not about them. Yep. Like it's about like it's about it's about you and what you kind of feel like you always wanted to do. Like, you know, like I kind of look at it as like the little kid in me, like what would the little kid in me do? Like, like, you know, would I make him proud on um, doing certain things? Am I, you know what I mean? Am I afraid? Why am I afraid? Analyze that, and, you know, trying to channel that in and, and be like the best person that you could be, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's just you up there. It's just you up there. And all those negative thoughts, they, they don't help you no. at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. Help you. I, I, I hear you 100% on that, man, because it's like so many times me personally, I, I care so much about what other people are thinking. Like I'll be with my wife and, you know, for the channel, I'll, I'll do a couple vlogs or something like that if I'm traveling. And I've always felt weird having my phone in front of me and talking to it, you know, while people are around me and shit like that, because they're probably like, oh, what is this guy doing? Blah, blah. But like at the end of the day, like who cares what they think, you know, and like yeah. to your point, if you genuinely believe the stuff you're writing down is funny which i'm sure it is um and you present it in a way that it's funny if they don't laugh like that's on them like something's wrong with them and like you're enjoying what you're doing um 
and that this like that's the right place you know where you should be then like you should just have the cl- all the clarity in the world because that's where you're supposed to be doing what you're supposed to be doing so w- who cares what everybody else thinks yeah it's yeah. tough and it's tough yeah. to come to that realization man because we all have egos we all you know get affected by shit man and it's um it's yeah. it's really tough to to try and counteract that shit you know yeah, it's very tough, you know, and, you know, your ego talk to you like, hey, this is, this is, you know what I mean? Like, uh, like I had the honor, uh, I don't know if you saw my Instagram, I won the, uh, there's this, like the little, there's this little bell competition at the Harlem Knights. And oh, not they have, they, Yeah, they give you like money if, if, if you get the most bells mm-hmm. and shit like that. And uh, I, I won um, last week. Shout out to Rashad, Bashir, Harlem Knights. I don't know if they know. But, <laughs> and yeah, they're then, big uh, fans of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> they're watching. All the Harlem is watching right now. Damn, shit. Fucking, uh, fucking Apollo, Mr. Everybody. Apollo. Everybody. everybody. <laughs> Sylvia's, everybody's watching. <laughs> everybody's tuning in. Uh, yeah, well, I want it, and I guess I guess to, to piggyback of what you said, like the bomb, I posted that on purpose because I won the competition. That was my last post, so the next post, I wanted to show people like, yo, like, like I've been bombing, mm-hmm. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I know you might have seen the post and you might say that I won, but bro, like eighty percent, eighty five percent of the sets are bombs. Mm-hmm. Because you're trying stuff. You're trying new stuff. You don't know what's going to go down. You know, you're performing in front of comics where they don't uh, they don't want to laugh. Or you're performing in front of two people and shit like that. You know what I mean? You're the last person to go up. You know what I mean? It's like situations where it's, it's daytime. It's like 4.30 in the afternoon. Nobody's oh. laughing and yeah. shit like that. This is, you know, this is one of those where you, you do a show and you, you try to get people and two people show up. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, there's a lot of challenges where people don't see that. So I posted it on purpose. Like, yo, this is the work. This is the practice. Yep. It's like where it's just you in the gym. It's just you practicing. It's just you in the gym. So, I, you know, it's, 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 it's interesting, you know. And so how is the like, stuff with other um, comedians that you're – I mean, you're not you're not competing against them, but like you're all trying to do well. I mean, I guess a more successful yeah. show is just better for all you guys. But like, do you get good feedback from other comedians? Like, yo, Vlad, that shit was trash. Like, or like, Vlad, that one's gonna work. Use that. Like, do you bounce yeah. ideas off of each other and say, hey, this might work for you, it might not work for me? Oh yeah, most definitely. They're very helpful. Mm-hmm. They 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 let you know how it is. They'd be like, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I pitch I pitch I, I pitch jokes to my boy, and he'll be like, no. Mm-hmm. Nah, no, sorry, no. Nah. <laughs> but you know they're also helpful in the op- opposite. Saying he was like, when they when you got something, they'd be like, yeah, that's funny, mm-hmm. that's funny to use that. And Stuff you don't like get that. nervous that because um, I know in the past people get nervous of just people stealing jokes or anything like that. Do you ever get nervous that like someone might take some shit or have you ever seen someone using one of your jokes or something like that? Uh, nah, I think I'm at that level where you know it's almost like you're at that level where at our level. You kind of just could play, you know, we're not at that. It's almost like you're so far, you're so like, we're we're so under the radar where we could try things and not be afraid of the outcome. And, you know, people ain't going to steal our shit, you know. (laughs) If if anything, I feel like your guys' stuff is the stuff that would probably get stolen because, no offense, like, you know, like, I would take your shit because I'm at the Comedy Cellar performing and I'm not yeah. nervous you're going to be there for maybe a couple months, you know? So it's like I come in – that like you guys are the stuff where maybe these top people are yeah. sneaking into these little Brooklyn clubs and the Bronx Club and Harlem – coming to the Harlem Bell shit. Yeah. It's like, oh, that didn't work for him, <laughs> yeah. but I could kill that shit, you know? Yeah, that's true. That's probably – that's a good idea, yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I guess I haven't experienced that. Yeah, I haven't, um, I haven't experienced uh, people – trying to steal that from me or whatever um but yeah but it could happen i don't i don't know how i would probably handle it maybe talk to the dude i guess uh well i think one uh me and another comic have a similar joke like it's about like um it's like about like uh like uh girls and have how they have their names tatted on them yeah, or yeah. on the necklace how they have their names on a necklace and earring yeah. and it was similar but my joke was talking about black women mm-hmm. and his 
this joke was talking about a uh, Hispanic woman, like uh-huh. Hispanic, very similar. So we talked about it, and he was like, you know, that's fine. You know, you could use it. I guess if we were on the same show, we get we could look out and not do the joke. But I think just the communication is interesting. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna Joe Rogan a dude on stage like Mencia. Like, yeah. yo, you. Nah, I'm not, I would never do that. Do but, you respect you know. him for doing that, or or is that sort of like you know get him when he comes off stage or something like that? What Joe for yeah. doing what he? And for people uh, that don't know, uh, Joe Rogan confronted, I think it was Carlos Mencia on stage because he had, he yeah. was clearly stealing his boy's joke or something like that and uh, yeah. really called him out for it on stage in front of the audience, all that shit. Yeah, you got to respect it because I think with Mencia, I think people were too, because comics are very nice with mm-hmm. it. They were too afraid to even say something, so he kept doing it. So nobody had the balls enough to like to step up to him, and you got to respect Joe for doing that. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. like, if people are not saying, it takes one person to just say something. It's so weird. People might see something happening that they know it's wrong, but they won't say anything. Yep. It's almost I mean, like that, that happens with anything. You see people getting beat up, and they pull out their cell phones exactly. and just record the shit. <laughs> yeah, people think the other person is gonna call the cops, but the other person <laughs> thinks the other person is gonna call. Nobody calls. No, 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 no one breaks up the altercation or whatever. You know. Yeah, yeah, nobody does anything. So you gotta respect that. You gotta respect that most yeah. definitely. That's yeah, especially. I, I mean, I don't know the, the degree, but I heard he was doing a lot. He yeah. was doing a lot. But uh, yeah, you gotta respect that. Yeah, you gotta respect that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's um, it's crazy. I mean, I would, I would be, I would be pretty pissed, but I don't think I'm the type of person that would confront somebody for for that. But if it was my shit, I don't know. I'd be. Maybe it's different. Maybe I do get up there and say something, but I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I want to. How how are you coming up with your material? Is it almost hard to go about your daily living because everything you do, like, do you sort of try to put it into a bit or is it just like you just go about your shit and if something's funny you might you know write it down or something like that yeah there's a little bit of both like you know uh you have the daily writing disciplines where you write i kind of write on a train most of the time when i'm on my way to places um but i kind of i kind of alleviated the pressure almost in a sense and uh tried to like find some organic uh because everybody's life is funny you can just put it you just got to figure out a way to put it on uh on stage and stuff like that like uh you might come up with a thought like yesterday i came up with a thought of um like you know how you get beat as a child and like um there's a transition to when like you're a teenager where the beatings don't hurt like 14 <laughs> like you know mm-hmm. what i mean yeah i thought that i thought that premise is funny mm-hmm. like th- that that just idea of a teenager getting stronger like oh shit he, she's whipping me and that i don't feel shit like oh damn flexing yeah <laughs> and the reaction from the mom like oh damn he's getting big like <laughs> yeah yeah but i just need to figure out how to put that on on paper because it was just a thought and now you just gotta try to work on it because it takes time to work on a joke and make it yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's what they say is you got to you know, think of idea. You get on stage and uh, one part of it might not work. Um, you keep trying it out, keep trying it out, and it eventually gets better. It'll grow into something different. Um, yeah. Are there any – who who are some comedians that, that you look up to, that you listen to, that you think are, are super funny? I love uh, Roy Wood Jr. I love his shit. The like, guy from uh, The Daily Show, right? Yeah, yeah I yeah, really yeah. like uh, his writing, his writing is really good. See, he's one of the guys that's unique too because he he puts out some tweets that are hilarious. I've seen some shit from him that I'm like, that's gold. And then oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen him on the Daily Show, and he's been funny, but not so f- super funny because also like it's a little restricted on Comedy Central. You can't be that yeah, funny, you know? Yeah, yeah, his, his his yeah, he's definitely restricted on that on that show. I'm not sure if he's still on that show, is he? Oh, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah, he's definitely restricted. His stand-up, I saw him in Brooklyn live. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, oh, man, he's brilliant. He's just, his writing and his performing, too. Like, he does the act-outs and stuff like that. Um, I like my, I like silly stuff. Like, Mike Epps has always been funny because yep. he's, he's, I feel like he's silly. I like, I'm, I'm like a naturally silly person, so yep. I like him. And, you know, of course, Chappelle. Chappelle yep. is hilarious. Those three guys, I really like those three guys. But uh, Donnell, Donnell Rawlings too. He's very silly. Yep. I like, I like, I like those silly, like, 
yeah, I like those silly, like, like not, I guess not like, uh, like creative writing, like a creative, like Roy Wood. Well, I always watch Roy Wood. Yeah. I, I was always fascinated by people who just like thought of things differently, you know, like before his whole, and we spoke about this last week on the phone, but Louis CK, he got caught up in whatever he got caught up. I just thought the way he analyzed things was so different yeah. and so unique. And I think Jerry Seinfeld's another dude like that. Like I, I never really watched Seinfeld. Um, yeah. But I started looking at some of his stand up and I started watching comedians in cars getting coffee, uh, his show on Netflix. Mm-hmm. And just the way he like could pick apart everything <laughs> to me is just it's just hilarious. And Larry David does that very well. Like little things that like people yeah. don't realize. Like you get on the train and like the one dude who's squeezing in the door, like, you know, to fit the shit, like he'll turn that into a whole bit, you know, whereas like yeah. other people just sit on the train and be like, come on, man. Like we're trying to get to work. But like, that's funny. Like he's block. Like it'll be three closes before the yeah. shit closes because the guy's not blocking it. Like yeah. shit like that makes me laugh. Like I'm sure you see tons of that around New York city, just little things like that's mad funny. Like this dude is, yeah. you know, bargaining for a slice of pizza or some shit like yo the price is right on the wall like you know like yeah yeah, no that's hilarious that's hilarious yeah (laughs) so i'm sure there's like tons of tons of like material you know that's accessible to you in the city you know that like you could you could find and work into bits and stuff like that Mm -hmm. yeah there's a lot of stuff yeah there's a lot of stuff a lot of train stuff a lot of everyday stuff uh, I guess it's just challenges like to not make it hack, mm-hmm. you know, not make it like every because a lot of people are doing it and finding your own type of uh, way of doing it. And how are you a- with I, I know you mentioned, you know, like rape was one of your jokes, obviously very, you know, touchy subject for people and stuff like that. Very sensitive. How is it for you as like, a, you know, an open mic comic? trying that material out or you might not get as much leeway as maybe a, a you know someone with a little bit more pedigree as a comedian where it's like all right maybe he could turn this into something you know, because he's louis ck or something like that where it's like i don't know this guy he just said that word so automatically he's shut off in my brain yeah yeah it's uh it's just it's, just, it's the process yeah you know we don't have that leeway so we don't have it we don't have that uh we don't have that um how would you say we don't have that um, that pass. Yeah. Like, you know. Do you have to get to your punchline quicker? Like, is it almost just like? Got to get to it quicker. You got to be, you know, you got to be likable. You got to have create. You got to have everything. Like me taking the stage uh, is different than like Schultz taking the stage. Yeah. You know, people know Schultz. They they he's hilarious. He has a, a following. People understand what type of person he is. You know, before he hits the stage, me, I, you know, I don't, you know, I don't get that leeway. But like, you know, it's part of the process. Everything's part of the process. You know, you gotta, you gotta try to take those risks too. You can't be afraid of talking them, uh, talking those things. Because there's like Louis C.K. Love Louis. Uh, he explained like there's like two routes you could take. Like even if you do stand up, there's a like there's like a safe route you could take. Mm-hmm. You could just do your jokes that you know work, or you could just do material that people might find funny uh, or is you could take safe top you could pick safe topics like dating in New York City you could pick those topics and there's another road where you could take where you take those risks and you talk about those things that you know <laughs> yeah I mean I think um, I think if there's like an education to it like I, I remember the whole the dude from Seinfeld like when he started saying the n-word and all this stuff like he genuinely was like upset on stage and like could it it genuinely seemed like he was you know agitated by something happening in the audience and was like using that word there was i mean that word is terrible but like there was no like there's a difference in comedy between like i don't know what i'm trying to say like people use like comedy is the last place where you can get you know where you could say crazy things anymore but then there's also like just being fucked up you know like so it's like if you're talking about rape or like something crazy abortion um 
you still have to have some compassion in what you're saying, you know, and understand the other side of it, more or less. Exactly, exactly, exactly that. You have to have some compassion. You can't just, it can't just be black and white. You have to, you have to hit both sides. Like, why are you talking about it? Why is it important for you? Mm -hmm. Like, if you're talking about this, why, 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 why is it, why are you saying it? Why, how does, how does it affect you? How do you, how do you feel about it? You know? Yeah, it's very. Um, so, is anything off limits? Huh? Is anything <laughs> off limits in comedy? Uh, no, no, no. Nothing's off limits. Uh, you talk, like you said, is the last, like you know, where people could come and they could talk about things. You could mm-hmm. talk about anything. Mm-hmm. But you know, you know, like I guess people have their every right to, to, to not laugh or laugh. You know what I mean? You take that risk talking about it, and you Do- can make it funny. You know. Do you I open guess. yourself up to after you get off stage if you say something controversial to like have a conversation with someone coming up to you like hey I thought blah 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 was you know have you had people talk to you afterwards like hey I have those earrings with my name on it and I don't think that girls blah 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 and you oh, got yeah. to entertain yeah. them Yeah I I somebody booed <laughs> when I said that one that joke when I said that one time but the funny part is it, it was getting laughs but that one person was like boo like you know what I mean and the rape thing uh afterwards the dude was talking to me about it. he was like why would you say that like why 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 are these comics going there you guys don't gotta go there you know and he had a point and mm-hmm. i listened he had a point like i don't you necessarily have to go there mm-hmm. you know um so you know all of that all of that is learning all of that is like that helped me i mean i'm to be honest i haven't said that that joke since oh, no. that night nah but the thing is you know, it gave me a value. Maybe I'll try in the, in the future, but that that helped me learn. Like, I guess you don't have to, you don't have to make that joke. Like, yeah. you don't have to go. I just that. feel like there's so much stuff out there too. I mean, like, even people say this now with politics and Trump. It's just like, oh, like another Trump joke or this and that. Like, that, I, yeah. I don't know if you have Trump in your material or whatnot, but like, I feel like there's so much material out there to like try something different or if you're going to talk about Trump you come with a different angle that no one's seen before you know exactly exactly and that's what the city is good for cuz the city sees everything yep. the city know who's the that they keep up on they're smart the audience is, is not dumb yeah like you know so if you say the n word and you're uh, and you're white like ah, yeah. i don't know like they could see through the bullshit like yep. they could see, you know so it's like you know you you got to be if you're going to talk about it, you better have your facts straight yeah. cuz the audience knows like they're not no dummy like you know what i mean like so yeah just just come prepared i guess if you're going to talk about it come prepared you know has yeah. your um does your appearance play any role in your comedy because you're super tall how it's, what are you like 6 8 something like that 6 8 6 4 6 5 no nah, you're taller than that no 6 5 oh 6 That's, 5 which is five. tall i mean like most That's comedians five. I just feel like comedians, uh, like, they sometimes have to have, like, uh, there's a perception, I guess, that I've seen is, like, comedians have to have, like, a schlubby look and whatever. But if you're tall, like, you look like you work out, like, do you, do, you, do your jokes have to be that much funnier? Because people would be like, oh, this dude looks like he's, he's well put together. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it almost like, like, it would yeah. be to your benefit if you just took off from the gym for three months and just started eating yeah. some shit. Yes. If I was fat. Yes, my jokes would hit harder. Exactly. Yeah, I feel like that's so <laughs> true, man. Hell yeah, hell yeah. If I was like, if I was, uh, you know, slugging, slugging it out or whatever, like you know, people, people judge you. You mm-hmm. you look, you go up there and it'd be like, the fuck, mm-hmm. this guy's playing basketball somewhere. You um, know, you sh- shouldn't be doing this. So you're going up. You said six six times a week, right? Uh, no, more than that. Oh, like, more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I get up every day, so I guess if I try to average it out, it's probably like a little over like twenty times a week. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. well, the thing is, it's like, um, I guess that's that's just the process of trying to get better, you know. So you always want to get up. You want to get up as much times as you can. So I try to get up as much times as I can. So what is your timeline? Because it sounds like you're just pretty lax about it. Like you understand where you're at in the process, but like. Are there different steps to it? Is there any like big show coming up that you are potentially going to be in, or like, how do you evaluate 
like your growth and maybe get to somewhere, you know, like going to the Comedy Cellar or something like that and doing an open mic there, or, you know, moving to L.A., like figuring out what the next real step would be. Mm, yeah, growth is interesting. Like you, you track your progress internally. Uh, it's, 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 it's a little like this. It's like yeah. those lines the lines and the lie detector the, test or whatever the, yeah you, you ever seen the um if you ever seen the the growth of like apple like when they first or amazon when they first start oh was it small and then like, it just it took off. small but it, it, it's back in like 97 and if you go from 2020 to 97 that shit is like going up like oh this. hell yeah yeah but the comedy is like it's like that it's, it's, but it's going it's going up this is gradually mm -hmm. gradually you could notice those those changes you can notice the difference like if if you keep if you keep consistent with it because mm -hmm. that's the thing that's why i get up every night is because uh especially at my level like two years if you stop you lose your progression like so like say if i stop right now and like six months later uh i'm gonna lose all the work that i put in because it's like it's not one of those things where you could just stop and just pick up where you left off yeah you know i mean even if even if jokes even the jokes i have now uh that might they might have kid if they kill today if i stop if i stop getting on stage and i come back and try to use the same joke it won't hit as hard because mm -hmm. there's tempo there's rhythm there's all these stuff that come into play you know there's comfortable you got to be comfortable on stage there's a bunch of stuff that um you know that that comes into the plate or whatever so you know but yeah you know you just take it in stride and uh keep trying to go how often do you keep up with current events and stuff like that and try and work that into your um sets or is it more so just stuff that you're familiar with uh you, you'd work that into your sets uh right now i'm trying to focus on like personal stuff that i could work that kind of i could kind of use and like go all around new york city and use like it's like a 10 10 minutes like a 10 minute that i could use personally by myself um when you have current events that that might work with the time but it kind of would it would kind of fade out mm -hmm. like say have like this hot r kelly bit like yeah people might laugh now but two years down the road or a year they uh, who knows if people would even remember surviving r kelly who knows yeah. I don't, that's mad I, weird you, know. you bring up r kelly because i just listened to um oh just... she you listening to that man god yeah. damn i didn't know it was that bad like so oh, oh, man. so what's the song <laughs> it was um if i could turn back time oh no yeah oh, if i could turn back the hand if man, i could turn okay. back yeah nobody's gonna be watching the podcast now <laughs> they think you listen so, to r kelly it's so, over i was listening to it with my daughter and i was like i was the thinking, daughter oh hell no nah. so i was listening it's to that so and then the world's greatest yeah. And then I was like, I was yeah. singing it, and I was like, this man made fucking bangers, like yeah. bangers beyond belief. Like he was, he like music gold. Yeah. And so I put one of them on my Instagram, and I got mad people DM me like with the with the um, emoji with the teeth, like you yeah. know. <laughs> I was like, I didn't realize that like I didn't know what his situation was. I didn't watch the documentary. I knew he was yeah. fucked up. Like I didn't. I thought Aaliyah was like sixteen or something like that. So it was bad. Yeah. But then people were telling me that like he had women as sex slaves and like he was forging yeah. documents. Yeah. And I didn't know like everybody canceled R. Kelly like that. Yeah, hell yeah, everybody. What? I didn't. I didn't know it was everybody. I thought like he got like a little bit of a pass still. Nah, uh, nah. So like, so his music is done. Yeah, that documentary. Yeah, that documentary. Because I had someone tell me, like, R. Kelly was done, but he still will listen to Michael Jackson's shit. Yeah, Michael Jackson's a little, I don't know. It's the <laughs> both touchy subject. Both touchy subjects, bro. Because they, they got the documentaries out now. If you get that documentary. That's what I'm saying. Like, don't let. I, I made it in my career. When I get that documentary. <laughs> <laughs> they came out. I haven't watched. Have you seen the Aaron Hernandez one yet? Oh, I heard about that. People are talking about that. That's People are saying that's, that's a good one too. But like, these yeah. documentaries, as much as they're true, they're gonna they're gonna like put that shit to the max. You know, like you're not coming yeah. out with a documentary with some weak shit. Like, if I've got some ammo on you, and it's like, oh, he said the rape joke, I'm gonna make that joke sound a hundred times worse than what it actually is. You know, like, oh, yeah. oh, definitely. 
So yeah. so I had to fucking stop listening to R. Kelly, man. Like he gotcha. Ignition Remix, like we can't if it's all, it's just shut up changes radio station. You gotta you gotta put Ignition Remix when you in the shower by yourself. You gotta say it like <laughs> say it like when say that like, say like when white people say the N word in the shower, that's how you gotta I listen never, to R. Kelly. You know what I think about sometimes <laughs> you gotta listen to them private. Sometimes when I, I sit in the quiet car when I take the train to work in the morning and I be, yeah. I listen to like my music uh, or like a podcast or something like that. And I always think to myself, like, what if for some reason, like my music just amplified over the whole car and like is mad yeah. quiet and there's dude like old dudes reading newspapers and shit. And for a second, he had to listen to like Eminem's new album or some shit like that or like some random shit I'm listening to. I don't know. I think that just makes me laugh that sometimes like it's just funny to that everyone listens to their own shit and goes back to comedy. It's just like you got to cater. If there's an 85 year old man who came out with his wife, you got to try and make that dude laugh about some some name earrings or some shit, you know? Yeah, no, it's not easy. No, it's not. It's not easy. But, you know, it's part it's part of it. You know, it's part it's part of the process. You know, you still see yourself doing it for 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 however like you still love doing it i see myself doing it i think uh the main reason why i kind of uh like did it is because i always pictured myself like being old mm-hmm. doing it like in a like in an old folks home like if i was old as hell you were probably killing we were, an old folks home yeah you know but imagine if we imagine if we were old no i'm saying like, now young you could probably kill in an old folks home Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like they probably would just be happy to have yeah. someone young in there, like telling yeah. them jokes and shit. Yeah, I feel like I'll be the old dude trying to get a microphone, trying to make the old people laugh. And shit. So well, there's I, certain yeah. feel- there's certain like niches. Um, so I watched this TV show Crashing, and like he, did you ever see that with Pete Holmes, the comedian? It was actually a mad good show, and he like would go around to open mics and sort of be good and whatever. Um, but he had some religious stuff that killed. So they put him on like a religious tour and he made mad money just traveling around to different churches telling like religious jokes. So like there's probably a like a niche of something that if you could find um I don't know what it is, but like old age homes, churches. Yeah, no, I don't know. If you well you want to do an R. Kelly tour, we just make R. R. Kelly, Kelly tour. tour. <laughs> there's just people that like there's still the people out there that support R. Kelly that you just tell them positive R. Kelly yeah. jokes. People. We're gonna have to sneak into the club and to perform and shit. <laughs> we spoke about that last week. It was just like the way people I mean, obviously there's people that do fucking heinous things like Harvey Weinstein, R. Kelly, you know, Michael Jackson, whatever, but then there's people like comedians and Zizanzari uh, Louis C.K., who do stuff that's like borderline just weird that yeah. people automatically just want to not listen to their comedy anymore and just put them aside. So it's like, it's a weird time where I give you a lot of credit being a comedian starting out because you're putting yourself out there by saying some stuff that could come across as controversial that if somebody saw you, you know, family member or someone you work with, be like, yo, nah, man, you're done. So like, it's tough yeah. saying shit because you gotta navigate a weird world. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. True, and yeah, you know, it is tough. And and I, at a lot of level, I'm I'm grateful that uh, <laughs> ain't nobody checking for what I'm trying to have to say. You know what I mean? If I say something at a comedy club, ain't nobody recording it because I'm I'm not famous. You know, people, you know, like the people who try to go for the famous people and try to say something at my level is good that we have that leeway. We could just say stuff and try stuff and, yeah. and, and just experiment and stuff like that. So, so that's, that's fine with me. You know, I'm good with that. <laughs> I'm not trying to... so, so I, I suggested to you, I mean, I think personally you should put some stuff on YouTube. I, I like, I think it could be cool for like, I know how they do like specials on Netflix for comedians and stuff like that. But if you almost put your own, little mini special together of all your good shit and put it on youtube and you know promoted that um i think those could be successful you know uh just going around from different club to club and doing uh just your experience of seeing things because you see it at the top level of going to the comedy store and comedy seller and all this shit but never on the the like the open mic level yeah yeah, yeah. so what's your route for 
like next steps of just navigating social media and like in the comedy world? I want to post more, most uh-huh. definitely. Last week, I felt like I posted a lot. Like I posted like like pretty much every day. Yeah. And I want to post. I want to post. I want to do different stuff, skits and stuff like that. I want to post some stuff on YouTube. So I want to. I want to do things that I I what I haven't been accustomed to. So I'm excited for this year. You know, posting stuff. I might post a clip on this from this podcast. I would love the, it. Yeah, yeah. Do you, um, you know? do people plug their their social media handles while they're on stage, or does that sort of uh, like is that not really a thing in the comedy world? Yeah, they plug it. Um, I don't really plug it. Mm-hmm. I guess uh, I don't know. I guess I, I feel like I need I need to. What is that word? You need to promote that shit. No, like pay your dues. Oh, okay. Like people that promote people that plug their Instagram, they've been doing it for years. Mm-hmm. And they kill. Like you know, I like the way they do that. Like if they kill, they'd be like, if you like what you see, follow me on Instagram. Blah blah blah. I like that. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Um, but, uh, hopefully in the future I could, I could work my way up to that where I could be like, Oh, if you like what you see, follow me on stuff. Yeah. 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 So when you travel now, do you try to, do you try to go up in different places? I don't know if you're leaving New York often, but like, if you go back home, will you see if there's a local open mic uh, at some bars in town or something like that? Oh, most definitely. I was at, uh, my friend's wedding from college. I performed at at, at his, uh, Oh, really? uh, at his uh what's that thing when before the wedding the reception uh reception i was think it was maybe the reception, reception yeah reception i performed at his reception and did, did it go a, over well it went well i did wrote some roast jokes about the couple and i roasted the the grooms and the and the, and uh the grooms and i roasted them and stuff like that and it, it was fun and uh, so roast, different- uh, nothing's off the table with roasting either right you like it's all on the table roasting yeah like there's no barriers that you have to stay within oh uh, no you could you could get them you could get them especially if they ask for it like you know what i mean like if he he, he you know he they ask, he asked for it so he he knows what's coming so yeah you could definitely yeah how it goes over like you can't control that but yeah if you if you're at a roast go 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 hard go for the jugular yeah, yeah, go hard because that's what they want to see. They want to see you dig the deepest, darkest secrets, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm a fan of this general stand-up. I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I, I kind of enjoy doing those roast battles, stuff mm-hmm. like that. But mm-hmm. hey, if people, people, some people are really, really good at it, and you should, you know, if you're gonna do it, do it. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan. I, I was watching a little of um. I, I like Jeff Ross. I think he's funny, and I think he does some cool, unique uh, comedy stuff. I remember on Comedy Central, he went to uh, like a prison. And, oh yeah, you remember yeah, that? Yeah. And did and like perform for the prisoners or some shit. And I think he's funny. And him and David Tell do this thing called bumping mics. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They like just go around, and I think it's. I don't really think they have a script and they'll just stand on stage and, you know, yeah. just talk shit to each other back and forth and roast people in the, in the audience and stuff like that. That was a genius. That was a genius. He's a, he's a legend. Yeah. He's a legend. I think people, yeah. I think, um, I don't know. How, how have you seen it? Have people been pretty stuck up or are people pretty funny with, you know, audience you've seen? Cause I've been in some audience that comedians have been like, you guys are trash. I'm not even going to give you my best material tonight because, you're just stuck up. Do you feel people that you perform in front of are, are fairly happy or are, are people miserable? It depends. If you perform in front of all comics, they're miserable as hell. You know? <laughs> Performing what? In front of comics? In front of on all comics, they're oh. miserable. You know? If you got an audience, sometimes you might feel an audience is, is, is a little weird. Like, at, there's definitely better audiences than other audiences. Mm-hmm. There's some some beautiful nights where everybody's happy and they're all drinking and they come together as a beautiful audience and yeah. it makes a great show. And there's other times where, uh, you know, it, you know, they're a little less. Uh, although it's like it's, it kind of doesn't even matter because, like, you know, you definitely don't want to judge the audience off the bat. Cause like you know, cause then you set it out there. You you know, a comedian might go up there like, oh, y'all one of those audiences, and straight from the bat, they're not like on your as, side. Then, as a human, they might be like, oh yeah, we are. That I'm not gonna laugh. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You never want to prejudge the audience. 
you know. But definitely more better audiences. Not every audience is the same. Every audience is different. Most mm-hmm. definitely, mm-hmm. you know. Well, yeah, you, yeah, you don't <laughs> do that. that. I, I, I've learned not to even do that. Like, and then anymore, I used to do that. Y'all suck. Curse the audience out. See, y'all, y'all not funny. All right. Yeah. It's not funny. y'all. Y'all suck. All right. <laughs> God damn, I've seen that before, man. I went to, it was Molly's friend was like doing an open mic or something. And there was this guy who was like supposed to be the, like the closing act or whatever, the big time thing. And he was, he was garbage. Like he was, he was, he was not good. And, yeah. um, and everyone in the audience was just like, like tight, like, yo, like you're trash. Like no one was saying anything, but like no one was laughing at his shit. Yeah. And he started coming at us. It was awkward. Like he was like. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna give you guys my fucking material because I've been watching you the whole night and no one's laughing and this I'm like oh, come on man I'm like like just call it a night or some shit like just be like yeah I, you know I appreciate everybody coming out but it, I'm not working tonight like you're like don't yeah. get at the okay. audience like either yeah. you're funny or you're not you know so like yeah. I don't know I just think the audience gets the pass the comedian's got to be the one who who oh, has yeah. has the bar like. Yeah, and, and knows like, all right, I'm not funny. Audience knows I'm not funny. I'm funny, but they're not funny. But let me just make the most out of it. Let me just say my shit. I'll laugh at myself. Like, that's why people sometimes, I guess, I've heard that like they get enjoyment out of the bombing because it's just like it's funny. You know, it's just funny to see people like the awkwardness. You know, and those those weird tensions in the room. Yeah, it is funny. It is funny, and and you learn too because like you learn like. Uh, if you if there's a, like a quote unquote bad audience where a comic might go, and then you might see another comic, they just come be like, yeah, that's a bad audience, and then another comic might come and just kill. Kill shit, yeah. You know what I mean? And that and I've seen that happen a lot, mm-hmm. where people might be like, that's a bad audience, and another comic would just come straight from the street and just murder. And that's where that's where the craft comes in, where it's like, yeah, it doesn't matter, like. You know, funny is funny. Like yeah. you know, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's crazy. Is there anything you're um you're currently listening to or reading right now that that um I'm just curious. Like, there are, are there uh, any podcasts you listen to or anything like that? Oh, podcast? Yeah. I haven't been. Uh, I, I took a break from like being on YouTube a little bit, like watching like YouTube videos. But uh, I I read this book. I read this comedy book called Judy Carter. It's like this comedy bible. It was like on like joke structure and stuff. I, I finished just reading that. Uh-huh. But uh, um, as far as like online, I'm kind of trying. I'm, I took a small break from like uh, binge because I was clicking on YouTube. I still watch a little bit. It's not as much as it used to be, but I used to watch a lot of YouTube, and I was wasting a lot of time. So I kind of. Well, what took else a break. are you doing? Just like in like when you're passing time, like when you're on the train or something like that. Like, what are you doing on the train? writing uh reading probably like maybe like that book that you used to say a lot of a lot of writing uh and your writing is in like is it is bullet it, points like you'll just write down a little sentence like something you thought of and observe like a diary and then i have like a diary of uh thoughts that i had and like extensions on my jokes i'm i'm listening to my set i'm thinking like okay well, how did that work how come this didn't work you know what I mean? I'm um, I'm taking highlights of my set. I'm labeling what works, what doesn't work. Ideas to expand. It's a whole thing. It's a lot of it's a lot of it's a lot of analyzing and construction and rewriting and and stuff of that nature on a train. Yeah. And you're fine of, with um, listening back to your sets. You could listen to your to your stuff. Yeah, I could listen. I enjoy listening to my sets now. And in the beginning, it was yeah. It I was, can't. Woo-hoo! Woo-wee. What what was the barrier that made you what like what how did you overcome from going from like not being able to listen to your stuff to now being okay with listening to it cuz I need to I need to know that shit. Oh yeah. Well, I can I can't listen back to any of my podcasts. Oh yeah. Well you get you get better and then you you appreciate I think you appreciate the journey. I think if you like if you look at it in that sense like uh you know you know where you was at in the beginning and you know where you are now, you could appreciate the growth. Like, so I could listen to my set and I could be like, wow, like last year, I wouldn't be able to do that. Like that Mexican thing I told you about. Yeah. Like doing crowd work on those, me- on those, on those workers for four minutes, I believe I did. Last year, 
I'll be honest, I, I wouldn't be able to do that. There's no way I could build, I, I don't know, there's no way I could just do it. I don't know, I, I just didn't have the experience enough to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to do that and take that risk, you could appreciate it. Like, you know, you could appreciate the growth, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you can look at that, you know, in that way, you know, you can see you could appreciate it for what, the, what it is, you know, so. Yes, yeah, it's, it's tough, but uh, yeah, I think a lot of it goes back to, and I think for me, it was still figuring out, you know, why am I doing this type of thing, you know, but as I do more and more podcasts, talking to people, I become more and more interested in different people's stories. Like I said in the beginning, I, I, I'm... That's why I ask you, like, what you do outside of the comedy, like, what you just do, like, what do you do on the train, you know? And and that stuff to me is like, is interesting because I feel like we knew each other in college, and you're you're friends with someone, like, you know, we talk to each other all the time, we'd go eat together, but like, mm -hmm. do you really know someone, you know? And 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 that's yeah. what um, I try to learn in these, and and I have more appreciation for what you do, you know? Like, just seeing your Instagram post is like damn he bombed you know but your comment is like i need this so i'll give you you know i i'll give you a like and i'll be like yo you're killing this shit anyway but like actually yeah. hearing from you why you posted is is stuff that i learn more about people and i don't know i still got to get better with listening back to my shit yeah well i'm a fan of yours you taking a risk as well you know with Appreciate that it. this podcast and the vlogs you know that's something that i don't know if i i could be able to do you could like, do you it, know, yeah that's this is like different everybody has their own craft and we're all growing trying to get better so i appreciate your craft as well you know it's just as it's just as important nothing more you know nothing less it's, it's just as it's just as, as it's important all part of the growth yeah i mean it's we're here for such a short time and i know everybody says it but like you know just do the shit that makes you happy i enjoy doing these i enjoy talking to people like you um do you want people to follow you do you want to put your you know social media out there anything like that or um, tell yeah. people where you'll be at. Like, let people know. Oh yeah, um, Black Colas on Instagram, and um, uh, yeah, you can just follow me on there. Try to post more. And, yeah. and I mean, you post the spots that you're performing at. You're in Brooklyn a lot of these times. I see like a, a slam dunk thing in Majig. You do a good amount. Oh, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this 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 uh, this Monday I'm gonna be downtown by West Fourth. And on on Wednesday, I'm gonna be actually in Harlem. I'm gonna post I'm gonna post like a little flyer on on my uh, Instagram. So uh, if yeah, you're, if you're in the New York area, if you're in Harlem, if you've got a set yeah. of keys, be ready to come out <laughs> see you fly. Get the jingle popping. <laughs> just, you better hope a fucking janitor doesn't walk in the building and his shit just start jingling. Huh? Yeah. Said, like if a janitor, like a real ass janitor, walks in the room. And it's just got mad keys on his shit, and it's just jingling because it's on his waist. You could yeah. get like you could be in the middle of a fire set, and the dude just yeah. comes in looking to have a good ass time, and his shit is jingling. It's just jingling. Throw yeah. your whole mood off. Yeah. Doesn't matter it's, if it's jingle, get your ass off. It don't <laughs> no, even matter. Bro. But it'll be an illegitimate jingle. Yeah, for real. Get your ass off stage and shit. <laughs> you hear the jingles. <laughs> uh, um, now, Vlad, I appreciate you coming on, man. Hopefully, this was this was all right. It was cool. Um, I appreciate oh, you, awesome. you know awesome thank you yeah i really appreciate it as well man thank you and you're my brother for life you know what i mean it's so crazy how you know we're just doing stuff and, and i'm proud of you so much Thanks, creating man. and evolving and stuff like that and you too yeah. and, and that's why i i had said i hadn't seen you when i went back to new york but i really want to make it um like a uh not a, a goal of mine or whatever but to see to see you perform and uh i'm definitely gonna yeah. Check out yeah. one of the spots when you're back. And like I said, if anybody's listening in New York, follow Vlad, um, Vlad Kolos, and, and check out some of his sets, man, because how we support, like, small businesses and all this shit and have small business mm -hmm. days and all this, like, support local comedy and all that stuff, too, because it's just yeah. as important. Um, so, like I said, yeah, I appreciate your grind. Um, I always thought you were fucking hilarious. I enjoy being friends with you. Yeah. Uh, I still remember playing on a three on three basketball game with you. And uh, oh, you, you man, it was like man. to 15. I think you scored like 13 or 14 of the points. I might have had one bucket. <laughs> that was fun, man. That was fun. I don't know wow. if you remember too, but my, my roommate, Dean, you came to visit us in Cortland one time. And every time I bring up your name, he's like, yeah, that's the dude that stole the chicken fingers from our freezer or some shit and then just bounced from the crib. Oh, yeah? Damn, I must have been drunk. My fault, man. God damn. I don't know that's what it was. 
when you grow up, like I would never do that shit now. But that I that that I would do that back then. That sounds like me back then. That's all he remembers. Not. Like he knows you. My boy Dean knows you, but he was like, yeah, yeah, I think he just came through the apartment, set it up, and then like just went in our freezer and took all the chicken fingers and some shit. That's <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, Dean, man. I apologize, man. I'm going to show it to Dean, man. I'm going to tell him we spoke. <laughs> oh, that was great. Yeah. Uh, but no, Vlad, thank you, man. I appreciate it. And I'll, I'll be in touch soon. Um, I don't know when I'm back in New York, but if you're ever in Chicago, hit me up too. And uh, we'll okay. go out. We'll find a couple clubs and just get on the mic there. I'll see you perform. Oh, right, man. I appreciate it, man. Have a good one. And yeah, we'll stay in touch, man. Definitely. Thank you so much for this uh, podcast. It was fun. It was sure. fun. Thanks.